So we're out here in Lake Como uh, in Italy on a boat, just cruising around enjoying ourselves. And we were having an argument with a couple of my friends who are with me, one of which is in med school. Uh, we were one of whom, that is to say. We were having an argument with regards to who is the best fit to become rich. Interestingly enough, we were just at Villa d'Este and we met a couple of business folks who were talking about very, let's just say, high leverage activities. They were talking about offshore accounts and things like that. And the med school friend of mine and I got into an argument of, in terms of major, who was the best fit to sort of become rich. Is it a doctor, since he wants to pursue becoming a doctor? Or is it somebody else? Is it a lawyer? Is it whatever? And the first thing I thought of was, it's a software engineer and it's not even close. I mean, not even, like there's no other comparison. And he was, at first, a little bit confused with regards to that statement because a doctor, I mean, your starting salary is $250,000. If you're a neurosurgeon, you can get up to $750,000 starting salary. And from then on, it's only up, to, up from there. Lawyers, I mean, you can start $500 an hour all the way up to basically no cap, really. So who's to say a software engineer who's going to make a measly low six figures is best to become rich? And we started talking a little bit more and we came to the conclusion that not any software engineer, but a software engineer who's already in the top 1%, meaning they are already making six figures with their profession, they are the best fit to become rich. And interestingly enough, we thought of the current top five wealthiest individuals in the world, four of whom have a software engineering background. That's not a coincidence. With this, what I want to say in this video is, I literally instantly just set up a camera and everything to talk about it, it's why software engineers specifically are the best fit to become rich in this day and age, especially in 2025 and beyond. Now, you're probably expecting me to get into AI and all this other stuff. You've already heard that somewhere else. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to talk about the core capabilities of a software engineer, specifically a top 1% software engineer. So those of you watching from the United States or any other Western country really making close to six figures or more than, let's say, five times the average of your national salary, national average salary that is, you will be considered in the top 1% of software engineers. Now, the reason that you are the best fit to become rich, right, is because you already have all the skills you really need to do exactly that, make money, or in other words, get money, however you want to uh, wrap it, right? For my own story, I mean, if you don't know about me, I can explain a quick little TLDR since I know this is a non-edited, pretty raw footage. I don't usually do stuff like this, but a little about myself. Started as essentially, initially as a computer engineer uh, in a robotics team, went on into UCLA for research purposes, he researched into human consciousness, went into NASA afterwards, and then after which went into the Fortune 500 as just a regular nine to fiver. Throughout that entire cycle, I was always considered smart by other people. I was 20, 21, making six figures already in a nine to five environment, but I always considered myself like I was capable of more. But for some reason, other people already thought that I was doing relatively well, because if I take a look at my friends and my circle, especially my high school friends at the time, I mean, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even dream of making six figures at that age, right? So for me, everybody thought I was doing well, but deep inside I thought, I have so much more that I can do. And it felt like I just was wasting my potential in a corporate world. So when I decided to quit and pursue entrepreneurship and then started a business, scaled it, and now here I am being able to, you know, afford a trip such as this and share it with many of my friends, I really do think that software engineers are the best fit to become entrepreneurs. And there's many reasons for it. First and foremost, if you're a software engineer already making six figures, that means to a certain extent, you are valuable enough to a company where they will give you minimum $100,000 for you to solve their problems. Now, in a 9 to environment, you know, I know that whatever you're getting paid, well, they have to make a return on you, right? As to what that return is, 1.5x, 2x, 2.5x, 3x, 5x, whatever the case, doesn't really matter. All you know is that you are actually more valuable than what you're being paid, but that's common sense, right? That's just how the world works. A business pays you a salary, in return you do work for the business and you make the business more money. That's how it works. So from a fundamental perspective, if you're able to make somebody, say a business, $500,000, $1 million, $1.5 million, $2 million, and you yourself take home $100,000, $150,000, you are on your own capable of generating that same amount of income be it a million, a million and a half, two million in your own business. And let me explain 
Why specifically? When you heard that statement, you probably thought, no, that's not true because I only take care of the fulfillment of the business, right? The business takes care of finding the client, all these other things. But that's because you fall, most likely you consider yourself under the stereotype of a typical software engineer. What are the stereotypes of a typical software engineer? Well, socially awkward, right? More so introverted, uh, behind the computer all day, and only really taking care of technical work. Sales, marketing, all these things, they have nothing to do with a software engineer. That leave that to you know the influencers or the business people or the charismatic people. Just give us the menial work, the technical work that we have to do as software engineers. And what I want to say is, first and foremost, you have to break that stereotype. Right now, I'm not going to use myself as an example because that would obviously be a little too biased. But I can bring up many other people. Marco, which you've probably seen on this channel before. John, another very good example. Sandra, another very good example. All software engineers who you could say once fit the stereotype of a software engineer, but very easily broke out of that quote-unquote shell of not liking or not being familiar with sales or marketing. So most often than not, the only reason why you're not rich as a software engineer is because of your own beliefs. It's not even necessarily your skills. It's your own beliefs that you are not fit to do sales. You're not fit to do marketing. But more, I guess, Important than that, it's not necessarily that you aren't fit to do those things, it's that you as a software engineer cannot do those things, right? There's this weird divide that I think starts from, especially if you received a university education, I've noticed that self-taught developers don't have this nearly as much, but those who receive a university education seem to be extremely wary of sales, marketing, communication, any of these things, particularly in a team environment. What I mean by that is, and I had the same exact thing in my nine to five, I got promoted to a manager in about three years and I was the manager of technically way more advanced software engineers who were 20 years, 25 years my senior. They had kids almost as old as I was and yet I was their direct manager. It does not make sense. How can I work somewhere and within three years I become their direct boss? Fundamentally and logically even it doesn't make sense. But that is simply because those same engineers who spent the 20 years, the 25 years at that same exact company they never ever gave themselves the, I guess, opportunity to pursue something with sales or marketing. And that's really what carried me throughout my entire career as a software engineer. It wasn't my technical ability. Technical ability just got me through the door. All it really did is help me land my first ever job, right? And then from then on, it just went up the coast from there. But technical ability was never the differentiating factor. Taking all these things into consideration, what you're left with is as follows. You're a software engineer currently making six figures and you're wondering, okay, how do I get rich? Your only really option that you see online is being overemployed, finding another job, multiple jobs working remotely or trying your luck at a fame company or even more lottery ticket, finding a startup, getting equity. Maybe it gets vested over the next 10 years, 15 years, whatever the case, and you become rich. That is not a sustainable path. Now, are there people who have done that and gotten rich as a software engineer? 100%, but the most sustainable and in my opinion even the easiest path is to simply get into entrepreneurship now i know cliche term everybody talks about entrepreneurship every next person is trying to sell you a dream but once again i want you to really think about it do you really think it's a coincidence that the top five wealthiest people in the world currently not 10 years ago not five years ago currently as of this moment are software engineers and the youngest billionaire in the world self-made recently i think scale ai also a software engineer we're in this age of AI and software, and this is gonna continue happening for at least, at the very bare minimum, the next 20 to 30 years, so at least next two to three decades. So if you're a software engineer, you're still gonna have the same exact advantage as you once did five to 10 years ago. That's not gonna go away. Maybe your role will change in how you use AI and how you familiarize yourself with AI, how you're gonna work with it, are you gonna be against it or for it? But at the end of the day, you as a software engineer will still be the highest leverage human being on the planet to make money. And I should say easy money as opposed to now I'm not going to talk about anything illegal or anything of that sort. That's not what I mean. I simply mean through legal manners, the easiest way for you to make money is going to be through software engineering. Now you might ask, okay, that's good and all, but go. Thank you for the talk. Now I understand why as a software engineer, it's easy for me to get rich, but how do I actually do that, right? Because talk is good, but it's all talk. Where's the actual proof? How do I actually go and apply what you're saying? Well, to do that, you need to take a look at your own experience as a software engineer. Many of you watching will come from very diff various backgrounds. Some of you will be front-end devs, some of you might be back-end, some of you might even just be in a completely different niche, such as maybe machine learning, right? Some of you might be data analysts, whatever the case. You'll have your own niche, you'll have your own unique skill set. 
And that exact unique skill set, paired with your previous experiences, paired with who you know, who be it your, let's say, college alumni, be it your managers, be it your friends, family, and then on top of that, you add in your physical location and your digital presence, and now you have what I call the unique advantage. You now have three things that you can consider as a software engineer, your experiences, your network, and your location, which you can use to actually start a business and get into entrepreneurship. Now, when you hear a business as a software engineer, you instantly think of SaaS, a unicorn, multi-billion dollar product. That's not what I'm saying. It really doesn't have to be that complicated. Most of you watching this don't want to be the next Jeff Bezos. If you do, then you can click off this video because that's not going to be for you. But if you don't want to be the next Jeff Bezos, but you do want to have time, location, financial freedom, such as this exact thing, so you can do this on a random Monday in August, right? Then I highly recommend you listen to the next 10 minutes because it's going to be extremely important. So if I'm not talking about a SaaS and I'm not talking about a tech unicorn, what am I talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is a service-based business, but not in a general way that you might think. What I mean is a service-based business that starts off as a consultancy that later can turn into a SaaS. Notice how I said can turn, not will turn. Main reason I say this is because I've worked with already hundreds of software engineers and it's very interesting to see, but fundamentally speaking, most of them want to get away from coding. Right? Even if they go with a development agency, even if they go with a consultancy, most of them want to outsource the coding aspect. Most of them find more joy in specifically the sales process, in the marketing process, and even those that still prefer the coding process, even those individuals prefer to code only the things that they want to do. The general, let's say, fulfillment work or the general project work, they want to outsource to other individuals. I've learned and I've seen firsthand that as software engineers progress in their careers, they also understand and they sort of lose their passion for coding. Not in a sense that coding gets boring, but in a sense that they don't find a product or they don't find a tool to work on that actually ignites their passion. But a service-based business ex allows them to do exactly that. Because what ends up happening with a service-based business is, well, guess what? You can choose a pain point, you can choose a problem, you can deliver a solution to that pain point or problem through a service. Now. A software can still be a service if you do custom development work, right? Or you can be a high-touch consultant, since many of you who have decades of experience can really dive very deep into a topic and help consult businesses or individuals on what it is that they want to do. An example off the top of my head would be if you're an AI engineer, you can help a small business sort of guide them on how to implement AI in their systems without you even needing to touch a single line of code. You just recommending existing tools and helping them get onboarded with those tools. Just a quick example. but. Combining all of that information, what do you have? Now you have uh, you, a software engineer, already making six figures, knowing the capability that you can make millions because you already do that for your own current company, knowing that you don't have to fit the stereotype of a software engineer who ha hates sales, who hates marketing, who hates all these things, right? And what you do then is apply that directly to finding a specific pain point, a specific problem. That specific pain point, that specific problem, doesn't matter if it's within your network, if it's outside of your network, if you use a friend's business or whatever, doesn't really matter. All you want to do is simply deliver a solution through a service. It can be high-touch consulting, right? It can be a quick software development thing that you want to do for them, whatever the case. Once you deliver that solution, what you'll have is what I call validation. You'll have your first $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, or whatever the amount earned through your own hard work without having to rely on an employer and with having to essentially rely on yourself. You're the only person that made that happen. And that is the most important thing. It's not necessarily the money that you made from it, but it's the fact that you now understand you are capable of making that money, the same money that you might get paid monthly, on your own within a few weeks, and hell, sometimes even less, right? It really depends. But that is exactly what the roadmap would look like. So if we recap everything and we try to go from the very beginning, what do we have left with? Well, you're a software engineer, right? If you're already making six figures, you're already way ahead of the curve. And I'm not even talking about with, with regards to other software engineers. I mean, literally with regards to all human beings on the planet. Software engineer making six figures, you're ahead of, I want to say, 90% of people easily. You already have all the problem solving skills. You have the technical skills. You have logical thinking skills. You have first order thinking skills. Every single skill that is critical to being an entrepreneur. On top of everything, most of you have enough liquid cash that you can actually just live off of for a few months. So in case, not saying it's gonna happen, but in case, you know, things go 
two of the wall, you still have somewhat of a safety net. And on top of which, all of those things considered, which are already quite advantageous on their own, you also have your unique advantage paired with those things. Combination of your network, your physical location, specifically what your physical location has to offer you, and your previous experiences. You use all of this to find a very specific problem. To, it can be a business problem, so B2B oriented, or it can be something for a specific customer, so B2C oriented. And then you choose a service to deliver a solution for that problem. Based on that service, you validate what it is that you did, and you try to see, can you make a SaaS out of this? Is it viable for you to make a SaaS out of it? If it is, only then can you start working on a SaaS, because now you actually have a client who's paying you for your work. And if you don't want to create a SaaS, if you want to pursue with the service-based model, like how I am currently doing, then you can also do that. The stereotype that I want you to understand, or that I want you to break, is that you as a software engineer, you don't have to suck at marketing, you don't have to suck at sales. And furthermore, you don't have to code for a business. Sure, your coding abilities can help you, they can be transferable when a time comes that you actually do create software, but that doesn't mean you can't get into a service-based business, you can't get into a consultancy, and you can't get into these other forms of businesses. The advantage as a software engineer isn't only in the fact that you can code. It's in your entire brain and how it's molded and how you think about problems and how you approach things from a fundamental perspective. I know that was a little long of a yap session, but uh, I wanted to make this video to sort of explain why I think software engineers are the best fit to become rich, especially in 2025. Of course, I didn't touch upon AI and all those things, but if just a little one minute about those, who else on this earth is better fit to use these AIs to help them with their business? Software engineer. We are the ones that are making these AIs. We are the ones that know how to best use these AIs. There's nobody else that knows them how to use them, essentially, other than us. So with all of those things considered, if you're a software engineer and you are currently making six figures or more, understand that you are in a very good position to become extremely wealthy. And I'm not saying that, I'm not taking that lightly. I say that and I truly mean it. Within the next three to five years, if you position yourself currently in this current market, you can come out essentially a multimillionaire. And by that, I mean you can have your location freedom, time freedom, and financial freedom. If any of the points that I discussed in the video were helpful, and if you want to learn more about them, then I highly suggest you book a call directly with me in the description below. And I can see you there. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.